Dirt, smoke. The industry of the North Midlands and all that goes with it. Where there's muck, there's brass. Bulging pottery ovens. Blind, belching chimneys. Coal pits, steelworks, an anthill of human effort. Where children, in their simple, joyous zest for life, must often scramble over slag tips and broken walls to play. It has been called a desolation of bricks and mortar. Yet, just beyond it, you will find the Peak District. From the cities and towns around they come. From Leicester, from Derby, from Nottingham and Sheffield and Manchester, to a welcome oasis, a bank garden which is common to them all. To many it remains a green thought, or perhaps to others it is some fresh enchanted island set in a murky but important sea of commerce, the calm centre of England, waiting invitingly within a 60-mile reach of half the population of England and Wales. Every weekend, train and coach bring those whose jangled nerves need quiet, some whose spirits seek beauty and peace, and the young folk who come to this, the first of the many national parks, to find fresh air and activity. Some have brought their bicycles, but others will go out to meet the challenge of the sharp hills on foot. The county's dry stone walls crawl like serpents up and down behind the grey villages, adding a firm geometrical pattern to slopes so much greener than in the south. Hikers setting out from Edale are at the start of the Pennine Way. They could, if they wished, walk to the Cheviots on the Scottish border and, and see practically nothing of town or village. But don't go looking for one dominant peak in the Peak District, because the name comes from the Piax, the ancient Saxon inhabitants who used to live here. What you will find, rather, are flat tops of black peat, blue shadows crouched in the molded crevices of hills, bold, rocky outcrops under the sky. The small holdings on the granite slopes offer but poor farming, hens, small herds of cattle, whatever breed the farmer fancies. Different indeed is the scene at Ashford in the water. In these lusher dales, water is never far off, nor the beauty born of murmuring sound. To Sheepwash Bridge on the bank of the Wye, they bring down the moorland sheep. The towns lie folded in bleak hill country. And Buxton is the highest market town in England. Buxton can be cold, but its solid gritstone walls are warm and retain something of the spacious dignity of the 18th century spa and pleasure town. Surely its jewel is the crescent, so calm, classical the pet fancy of the fifth Duke of Devonshire. Here we can alight in the shadow of its pale curve to relax in the ornamental gardens. But other towns have other things to offer. Matlock, in its deep gorge, possesses caverns, petrifying springs, plenty of tea shops, and its own circle of devoted admirers. In Ashbourne, the grammar school imparts a much more old-time atmosphere. Here, Dr. Johnson came with Boswell to stay with the headmaster. Great names, 
second only to that of the original royal patron herself. 